Okay, uh, then let's start uh, a short lecture series of five steps to read, uh, critically read a scientific paper. And today is step three. Uh, but starting uh, before starting step three, I would like to shortly summarize the first two steps. The first step was, okay, hold on, this one, finding unknown words. So uh, the real point of this step one is first to understand what uh, what ununderstanding means. Okay, the first, uh, we just started to understand what that understand means and uh, what is the status of un not understanding. Okay, understanding what you don't understand is the starting point of the understand. And then the uh, finding unknown word, the step one is mainly focused on to find, uh, to find out and uh, recognize which part you didn't understand. So then uh, you can uh, like uh, you can consult the dictionaries or website or textbooks to clarify these uh, unknown concepts. Okay, that was the step one. And uh, step two is a uh, colorization of the paper. And the main purpose of this was a uh, distillation. Okay. Uh, the, uh, okay, actually, also in step two, you're going to use step one. You highlighted the several unknown words by blue marker uh, in my color definition. So you, uh, surely uh, you can use your own, own color, but uh, in my standard, my own standard is uh, blue. I just highlighted uh, some unknown words with blue. And uh, sometimes that was only the English matter, but uh, most of the cases that was an uh, unknown conception of me. So especially I was reading on um, the paper from a different field. I will find a lot of words that mimics like uh, I'm familiar with, it, like a standard word. It looks like a standard word, but uh, technically they were used in its special meaning in some field. And I try to find it. Okay, uh, maybe short example is a sensitivity. So when we find the word of sensitivity in the OCT, or imaging, it most of the cases means a signal to noise ratio, right? Uh, it, it's technically, it's not a signal to noise ratio. Maybe uh, you've already studied or you, uh, you've already learned, but uh, uh, it is something like uh, the value, quantitative value in proportional to the signal to noise ratio. That is our definition of signal to noise ratio, SNR. Okay, uh, sorry, uh, the sensitivity, the definition of sensitivity. But when we found it in a clinical paper, it doesn't mean that the uh, physical sensitivity, what uh, we've taught. The sensitivity in a clinical paper is a sensitivity uh, to find the abnormality or the disease. Okay, over uh, all of the disease cases, how many percent of the disease we can find? the definition of the sensitivity, their, sen uh, their sensitivity, okay? So even the same words, and uh, even that word is quite widely used in the world, but uh, it can have a very specific meaning in each field. So you need to be actually really careful about it. And uh, most of the students, and not only the students, uh, even the professors, if they are only working for the engineering and I started to read the clinical paper, maybe they misunderstand the meaning of the sensitivity, okay? So uh, the, by using step one in a step two, the first one uh, you need to highlight is uh, something unknown words and unknown conception. Uh, by highlighting it, you can uh, consult a dictionary and a website and a textbook uh, or the other papers. That one is the first color. And the second two colors are the, is the, uh, are the for importance. So in my definition, yellow is something important part and the green is more important part. So actually I'm, uh, I'm using only two colors. Or well, sometimes I'm highlighting on the marker and also underscore some words. But in, anyway, uh, in, okay, fundamentally it's just a selection of the important sentences, okay? And uh, how you can select the important sentences the rule is quite clear. Only pick up this highlighted part and it forms a short version of the paper. You correctly selected the important part. And I call it as a distillation. 
So distillation is not the abstraction, okay? So for that, uh, I just show the model of recognition here. Uh, when you read something, it's an input, right? The reading is the input. The distillation is uh, from the input to the output. Okay, it's a, uh, the output is something like a reading. So if you ask to shorten, uh, if, you, uh, if you are asked to make a short version of the paper, you can distill it, okay? And uh, read it and uh, select the important sentences and uh, pick it up and can create a short version. Okay, this is the first step. But in reality, when you really want to read a paper or critically read a paper, you need to construct your understanding. Okay, so uh, read something and uh, make your own recognition and uh, re-explain it. This is the abstraction. So now we are in the way to make how we can make this understanding. Okay, uh, here the input, now you're coming to here and uh, by using it, we are going to make an abstraction uh, or recognition. And then you can make, uh, remake the output that the abstraction. Okay, but anyway, this is something like a step four. So today, uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that part. Uh, that was only the, say, summary of uh, step two. Okay, then step three is, uh, uh, for step three, I slightly change the point of view, but uh, I'm going to uh, explain one other important point to critically read the paper. That is a paper structure. Okay, uh, let's see. Step three, understanding the general structure of papers is something we are going to do. Now, by the way, on a step four, uh, we are going to talk about the abstraction. And then uh, we are, and finally, in a step five, we are going to study about how we can constructively read the papers. It's a critical reading, okay? So, but anyway, uh, let's go back to step three for today, the general structure of the paper. Okay, on two, um, uh, to clearly understand the point of the paper, we need to understand the general structure of the paper. And to understand the general structure of the paper, we need to understand the purpose of paper. Okay. And the purpose of the paper has, a, a, it's equivocal. It has two meanings. One is the purpose of the study. Like in some technical papers or scientific paper, papers, you can find a section of purpose. The purpose of this study is blah, 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 right? And uh, this one is a uh, one meaning, but uh, here I'm talking is not that point, that the purpose of writing the paper or publishing the paper, the authors has uh, its say, uh, maybe not. In general, publication, the act of publication itself has its meaning, okay? So otherwise nobody want to publish the paper or, uh, the authors want to publish the paper to advertise uh, their technology, right? Make it well known. Um, hold on. Let me think. Okay. And, and I'm going to use that two, two words, and uh, I'm going to use this word small purpose, macroscopic purpose, microscopic purpose, and uh, macroscopic purpose. Microscopic purpose of the paper is to prove something. To prove something. Hypothesis, technically it's hypothesis. Okay, and a macroscopic purpose. It's uh, to say broadcast knowledge 
and this is to further make the knowledge by the uh, uh, entire academic community. It's a building, building collective knowledge. Collective, I don't know, you guys also use this word. Show for the knowledge. This, I think uh, you guys have the same character, but I'm not sure whether this is a correct, uh, a correct translation for Chinese. Okay. Uh, but in any way, uh, we need to think of two purposes. Okay, and then uh, regarding the this macroscopic purpose is actually also the purpose of our reading. The macroscopic purpose is not only the purpose of the author, but also the readers. You want to know on uh, some knowledge, and also you want to add something. Uh, during your study work, research work, by reading the paper and uh, criticize it, correctly criticize it, or uh, give a critique on it, and uh, you can expand your knowledge. And also you can uh, actually, uh, you can expand the collective knowledge itself. So we can share it in a community. Uh, your, uh, something you've add can be shared by the academic community, okay? And then the microscopic purpose, is to prove some specific uh, specific hypothesis. That is something uh, I'm going to talk, and this is actually the starting point. Okay. So then, uh, say we can start. It. Okay. Then, uh, the at this moment, what we clarify is that we are, we are going to start from thinking of this prove the hypothesis. Okay, that is a starting, our starting point. And then maybe you need to think about what is the hypothesis. Hypothesis is something, uh, say, something you assume and uh, it is going to be proven by the paper. All of the scientific papers are written to prove the hypothesis. Okay, uh, that is something uh, even some professors can miss it. Uh, it is because some of the papers behave like it is not a proof of the hypothesis. But by awareing uh, anything, uh, any scientific paper is to prove the hypothesis, you can find the hypothesis. So sometimes it is clearly written in a paper, but sometimes it's not. But in any way, you carefully check it, you can find the hypothesis. And uh, to clarify, uh, okay, then there is a section in a paper which clarifies the hypothesis. Okay, what is that part? Do you guys have any idea? Can think about it. Actually, uh, that is the introduction. Okay, now we are coming to the introduction. Introduction uh, have can have, oh, okay, the introduction can have three modules in it. The first one, the situation, or background. And the second one is a complication. And the third one, is 
um, say approach their approach, author's approach. Okay, uh, let me explain one by one. Situation is a something, is like a description of the current world without any problem. Okay, it's just a fact, the description of the world Uh, for example, in a like uh, in this case, uh, this paper OFDI, this one. Uh, now you you are you guys are reading this one. Okay, let's uh, find an example in this paper. Optical coherence tomography OCT allows minimally invasive cross-sectional imaging of biological samples. Uh, this is just a fact and there is no problem. The OCT is great, okay? That is an example of a uh, situation background. Uh, he also listed uh, several other background, okay? One dimensional ranging is provided by low coherence interferometry. This is another fact, actually no problem. But uh, in the world, the station can be changed occasionally. That that complication, okay? Maybe complication. Some of you are not that much familiar with this word, but uh, you also can use the word of problem. Twenty. Okay. Uh, in a station or in the original world, world, there is no problem, but by some trigger, we are going to have problems, right? Uh, let's check this paper again. This one, the relatively slow imaging speed of time domain OCT system, however, precluded screening of large tissue volumes. It's a problem, right? And actually uh, I use this symbol here to cut the situation and the problem, okay? So this part is actually the situation, but this part is the problem. Okay, then, uh, so this means uh, when you read the introduction, uh, you can try to find out which part is the situation and uh, which part is the complication or problem. So in some papers, it was actually mixed chart. So sometimes it's hard to find, but uh, uh, if you carefully read it, uh, you can find it. Or sometimes uh, they didn't clearly write the uh, problems, but uh, uh, by carefully reading it again, you can find it or you can smell it at least. And then uh, after clarifying the problems or the complication, they are going to explain their approach, okay? Like uh, in this case, this one, uh, maybe the sign is here in this paper. Uh, uh, hold on. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, again, this one is a, a previous solution in this paper, in, in a case of this paper. One potential solution to high speed imaging is offered by spectral domain OCT, SDOCT, okay? It's a, a, another solution, but hold on. Again, uh, they show, this one is actually a two step, a two steps, this paper. It's a situation, okay? And a, a complication problem. And then they showed a old solution Actually, this is uh, another situation, okay? The, pro uh, the situation and a problem and a problem has already been solved in the world. It's a new situation, but 
here. Okay. However, oh, oh. however, the use of CCD arrays may cause problems. Actually, they use the word of problem. It's quite easy to find. Okay. Uh, a CCD arrays may cause problems associated with a phase washout by changing in the sample arm length during the pixel integration time. Uh, by the way, phase washout is something like a key keyword. If I were you, I will highlight it with blue. Maybe you know the phase and a washout, but uh, maybe you don't know the phase washout. Okay, it's a keyword. Actually, they are quite well hidden. Anywhere they can be hide, hidden. Okay, phase washout. And uh, um, pixel integration time. Uh, another, uh, another keyword. And another important word you can find here is a very general word, but it was. However, it's an evident sign of uh, complication. Okay, they just lit it up, the good things of the spectral domain OCD, and then however, means after this, they started to talk about the complication. Okay, and then the finally, they qualify two problems, the speed and uh, the problem of its first solution, the phase washout. And then they started to talk about their own approach. And now the, the clue is here in this paper. Actually, most of the scientific paper, you can find uh, this, uh, say this keyword for the final sentence. Most of the cases, the final sentence of, final sentence of, The final sentence of the introduction can be the, the, uh, say, uh, their approach. So they will summarize what they are going to do. Okay. And then hypothesis. And now we found a situation, situation, complication, and approach. But as I've mentioned, the paper, scientific paper is 100%, or at least if the paper was well written, it should be organized to, it, uh, it should be organized to prove a hypothesis, okay? So then what is the hypothesis here? Okay, and if the paper is a kind of clinical paper or something, it's more easy. They just show the hypothesis first. Like uh, uh, we hypothesize that nerve fiber layer is associated with the progression of, gla uh, of glaucoma. Sometimes you can find this kind of sentence in uh, clinical papers. So in this case, it's quite clear. The hypothesis is nerve fiber layer is associated with glaucoma and they are going to prove it in a paper. But Engineering paper, it is actually uh, not clearly written, but uh, surely there is a hypothesis, okay? And uh, once you know it, the finding it is quite easy. Like in the case of Yun 2003, the hypothesis is not written, okay? Let me check. In this paper, we demonstrated OFDI based optical frequency domain reflectometry, blah, blah, blah. And our, our FDLCD system utilizes the recent developments uh, the wavelength spectral laser to achieve ranging of 3.8 and an A line acquisition time of blah, 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 blah. Right? That's it. No hypothesis. It seems uh, he, didn't, uh, he didn't prove any hypothesis in this paper. Then, what is the hypothesis? It is not written here because it is too clear. They hypothesize this new technology solve the problem. Okay, that is the hypothesis. hypothesis. It is not clearly written, explicitly written in the paper. 
But uh, most of the engineering data uh, first explain the new development and then prove it can solve the problem. Okay, so uh, say it can solve the problem is their hypothesis. Okay, then let's go back to this diagram. So now uh, I'm talking about an introduction. Uh, to understand the introduction, the point is uh, the point is its structure or the objects uh, or contents. Sorry, the contents in the introduction. The one is the situation and a background, situation or background, and a complication and approach. And then uh, sometimes it is clearly written, but in most of the cases there is a hidden hypothesis. Approach, the approach actually, maybe we can add the. The approach can solve the complication. This is actually the hypothesis. Okay. Then uh, this means uh, first, to, uh, when you read a paper or especially introduction, you need to clarify or uh, clearly understand, uh, uh, clearly find, uh, clearly need to find the situation, complication, and approach. And once you uh, find an approach, you can find out what they want to prove. Okay? And, uh, and uh, grabbing this point is a key, it's a kind of map to explore the entire paper without clearly, um, uh, without clearly understand what is their hypothesis, Maybe you are going to uh, you are going to be lost when you are reading that paper. Uh, Sometimes you can understand each sentences, but are uh, uh, just totally lost to understand what they want to do. Why, uh, hey guys, uh, what, why why these guys are doing this? Something. Got it? And uh, actually, maybe you have some experience with this already. The reading the paper and uh, you can understand each individual sentences or even the equations, but I uh, couldn't understand why they are doing this. So this kind of uh, the lost children effect can be happened if you didn't understand the hypothesis. Okay, so when you read the, uh, the uh, okay, now we can summarize the point of the introduction. The purpose of the, uh, maybe from your perspective, the purpose of reading introduction is to clarify the hypothesis. And to clarify the hypothesis, you need to understand the situation and the uh, situation. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, to clarify the hypothesis, you need to understand their approach uh, and the complication. Uh, sorry, maybe the complication and their approach. Okay, and uh, to understand the complication, you need to understand the situation background. Okay, get it? Maybe uh, just some addition situation. Um, and a complication twenty, and approach approach maybe uh, you know the word of approach right? approach approach in in Japanese actually we use the word of approach. Then, uh, in, anyway, so now we know the introduction. Introduction, and uh, it has situation, complication, and uh, approach. And from this approach, we can know the hypothesis. 
Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, have, have you heard about the word of assumption? Have you heard about it? Assumption. Assumption and hypothesis. Actually, uh, I'm not sure about in Chinese, but in Japanese, it is, uh, say, quite easy to misunderstand. And uh, sometimes that people use in exchange, like uh, on a hypothesis, we call it as this one. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, assumption, maybe I'm going to change the change color. Okay, and uh, these two are totally different idea. Please aware about it. The assumption and the both of them were not proven. But the hypothesis is something to be proven in the paper. But the assumption was something not proven, but accepted it is true. So we are not going to prove the assumption. But uh, we are uh, without any doubt. Uh, okay, we are doubting it. But uh, in any way, we decided to accept the assumption is true. This is the assumption. Okay, so these two are totally different. And uh, please, cl uh, please clearly understand that point. And so, otherwise, sometimes very, uh, say, frequent mistake uh, happened in the academic society is prove the assumption. We call it as tautology. The assumption can be proven uh, to be true because that was at the beginning accepted as true. Okay, so proving the assumption under the assumption is true makes nothing. Okay, uh, it is surely you can prove it because it was treated as it is correct. But a hypothesis is something that was not accepted or not used uh, as a fact, but uh, we are going to prove it in a paper that is true. Okay, so in any way, uh, this one is uh, just an additional point. Okay, now we are coming to the introduction. And then what is the most uh, highly relating part in the paper with the hypothesis or introduction? Okay, uh, let me uh, let me first clarify uh, general components of the paper. Mostly the paper start from introduction, right? And then uh, you can find the method section. <clears throat> and then result and discussion and conclusion. So these five are, say, most known components of the paper. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, uh, engineering, in the case of most of the engineering paper, it is ordered like this, introduction, method, result, discussion, and conclusion. But uh, sometimes in some uh, research field, the method is put after the conclusion. Okay, but in any way, uh, these five are the major players of the paper. And we talked about the introduction. So now my question is, what is the most highly relating uh, section to the introduction? Actually, uh, if you find or if you fix the hypothesis, something in this structure can be fixed. Can you imagine it? Okay, so most of the cases, the student and the readers and the uh, readers and also writers, the authors started to write from the being, introduction and a method, result, discussion and a conclusion. But uh, I actually, when I uh, make the report or paper, uh, at least in my awareness, uh, I didn't go to the method section after the introduction. 
And also, when I read something, I'm not going to the method section after introduction. Actually, the introduction is paired with a conclusion. Okay? Here, we have hypothesis. It's actually a question, right? Whether this is correct or not. So hypothesis is a question and the conclusion is the answer. Okay, so the, uh, at the end of the introduction is a hypothesis, and this is directly associated or related to the conclusion. Okay, like in the case of this paper, their hidden assumption is a swept source OCT uh, can overcome the problem of the fringe washout, a phase washout, they use the word, sorry, a phase washout and uh, can be used for the medical imaging, okay? So then the conclusion should be, it, uh, we found or we proved it can be used. But we proved the phase washout was not a problem uh, for the OFDI. I didn't carefully check it, but uh, let me check. Conclusion. Ah, yeah. Actually, this paper is quite well written. Compared to spectral domain OCD, doesn't suffer from phase washout, okay? So uh, their hypothesis was swept source OCD was not suffered. Uh, their hypothesis was a swept source OCD uh, was better than spectral domain OCD because it, was, it is not going to be suffered by the phase washout. That was their hypothesis, right? And they prove it. <clears throat> so there is a direct relationship with uh, uh, say end of the introduction, the final part of the introduction and a conclusion, okay? And uh, you, you need to double check it. And actually uh, some of you have already uh, wrote the bachelor thesis and uh, some of you are going to write it. But uh, uh, there, uh, one of the uh, very frequent mistake of the student is conclusion doesn't answer to the hypothesis. So sometimes the end of the introduction and a conclusion are discussing totally different things. And actually it can be very, very frequently happened and easily be happened because most of the cases, introduction, the student write the introduction first and the write the conclusion end at the end of writing, writing process. And sometimes it has a time span of a few weeks and they just forgot about what they talked in the introduction. Okay, so you need to double check it. When you write something, you need to double check it. Okay, then now we are coming to the conclusion. And a conclusion, sorry. Conclusion is uh, the proof of the hypothesis. But then the next point is, how did you prove it? Okay. Conclusion is a proof, answer and a proof. So to prove it, we need uh, some tools, okay? The proof is given by the combination of facts and logic. So we need some certain facts, okay? And, and these facts are going to be processed or combined with proper logic 
and give the uh, uh the give the proof and that the conclusion okay so then now we need to think about our facts and logic so where do uh do we going to describe the logic okay so here is the basic structure of the paper and uh, we did introduction already and a conclusion and now we have three okay the logic is actually this one discussion discussion shows you a uh, certain logic okay uh, to derive the conclusion answer so this means logic is associated um, yeah discussion section okay and the logic uh, in a discussion is going to be uh, used several facts okay and then what the facts used in a discussion section where do you get the facts imagine it can you imagine it okay the one is from reference papers citations actually the reference papers maybe reference paper is proper okay they uh, cite several papers and uh, they use the conclusion of each paper at the facts and they combine these facts by the logic and give the proof or answer okay and but uh, if that is only the references maybe uh you couldn't prove it you couldn't directly prove the hypothesis you need something additional additional fact sorry um, Fact. fact type one and there is another fact fact a type of fact type of facts fact two type two fact is that something you obtained from the experiment by your own okay so what they did something you got by your own used in a discussion but uh, it should be presented in a paper where do you present something you got the rigid fact you found you got and are present in a paper is result right okay now uh, we are starting from the introduction and a data conclusion and a discussion did it and now we are coming to the uh, result okay so normally then uh, normally the people are uh, things the flow of the paper is coming from the top to the bottom okay But uh, in reality, when you think about the, the logical structure of the paper, you start from the introduction and a jump to the conclusion. And to have the conclusion, we need a discussion. And the discussion uses the references and the result. Okay, let's qualify that uh, connection. Intro introduction and the conclusion have a direct relationship. And the result and discussion have the direct relationship and the discussion and a conclusion have the direct relationship. Okay. So now what the residue is here, method, what it is then. Okay. Oh, 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 sorry, this one. Now we are coming to this point. 
and uh, okay, result coming to this one. Fact two, the result with or results true. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then how do you get the result? You need something to get the result. Okay. Result is obtained by using method. Okay, so the method is then is, method is a description of something which was used to obtain the result. Okay, so now anything connected. Uh, actually, uh, there is one hidden one I didn't talk, but it's very important. I'm, I'm going to talk about it soon now, okay? Now result and the method are connected. So this is uh, something like a hidden structure of the paper or generalized structure of the paper, starting from the introduction and a conclusion and a conclusion is supported by discussion and a discussion is supported by the result and the result is supported by the method. So this path actually, okay. And then by the way, still there is one thing missing. So like, Yun's paper, 2003, uh, their main point, his main point, or their main point is a new imaging technology, OFDI, right? But a OFDI is a something new, but uh, not the method to use the result. Uh, generally, on uh, a narrow meaning of the method is, it's something not new, okay? It was uh, the equipment or tools used to prove something. It's just a tool, like a scissors and a pencil, or, or like an oscilloscope. Oscilloscope is surely not new. A function generator, function generator, not new. And a computer, not new. Okay, the method in narrow sense, is just a description of which equipment did we, uh, uh, did we use, or we did use, or we used, sorry which equipment we used. The description about it, the method, there is nothing new. But uh, here, uh, somewhere we need to uh, describe the new method, uh, sorry, the new equipment we build. In this case, it's a swept source OCD or say an OFDI. On that, on, on that time, they called it as OFDI. So then where is the part we are going to, uh, we are going to describe something new it looks like a method, but in reality, it's not a method. It is actually, uh, there is another section, uh, at least in the old good days. Is, okay, principle. Principle is a something new they are going to present. And they are going to prove that principle is correct. Uh, sorry, and a principle is useful. The hypothesis is principle is useful in this case. The principle is uh, uh, some element used in the hypothesis, okay? And uh, in uh, an engineering papers case, most of the cases, 
It is a description of new technology they developed. So, and actually there are two components, looks like method, principle and the method. And the principle, principle is uh, technically used in the introduction. To describe their approach, they need a principle, okay? So uh, in reality, this means we have six components in a paper. Normally it was believed as five, but in reality, in my understanding, it's, it's six. But traditionally, especially these days, modern days, the principle and the method are treated as a single section. This is very tricky point. So when you read the method section, you need to clearly uh, find out uh, which is the principle and uh, which is the method, okay? And uh, sometime in a paper, most of the method section was dedicated to the principle, to describe the principle. And the method is only a single sentence or something, okay? And uh, for some other papers, there is no principle. Uh, if there is no new technology presented, but I try to use the, the current existing technology to prove some like a clinical hypothesis, there is no principle. But uh, both of them are collected, it, are collected up into a method section. But uh, anyway, you need to carefully uh, uh, to aware which is the principle and which is the method. Okay. Now, uh, you understand, I, I think uh, you understand this point, and uh, maybe you, uh, you can recapture it later by checking your notebook. Uh, but anyway, uh, okay, this one is only the half the point of today's lecture, but once you understand this point, the, uh, the latter half of today's lecture is only a few minutes, okay? The first grab it, and then I'm going to talk about a 50%, the residual 50% of this lecture only in a few minutes, okay? Now you understand this. And by awareing it, we can find out, uh, say, very simple method to read a paper. Actually, it's an order of reading paper. Okay. Let's use our uh, Yun to the three again. Now, um, hold on. maybe I'm going to copy it. Let me just clean it up. Okay. Okay, and um, I now I assume, assume actually, it's assumption. I assume you guys uh, already understand the structure, important structure or generalized structure of the paper. Then how do you read the paper based on this knowledge? Uh, maybe first thing uh, you can check is the title, okay? By uh, carefully reading the title, you can make your awareness in which direction you are going to go. Okay, so what is the main topic, at least in the author's understanding, what is the main topic? It's appeared in the title. Like, uh, but uh, and anyway, uh, in this paper's case, it's quite straightforward. High speed optical frequency domain imaging. Okay, and anything is keyword actually. It's not a good example for this, but in any way, it's a very high impact paper. And then, uh, I actually sometimes, maybe it's a little bit advanced course, but uh, uh, I normally highlight the important person, like uh, Andy Yoon and Brett Boma. Uh, uh, okay, actually this paper is also not a good example. 
anyone here is like an old stochastic. But uh, uh, by checking on uh, the papers, multiple papers, you can find the single author involved with multiple papers. By this, you can find out the latent relationship among papers and the researches. Okay, you need to always aware that the paper is written by human and the research project was also organized by human. Now, who did it is uh, directly impact on the direction of the research. So it's good to check the who wrote it. And to aware it, uh, also maybe you can check uh, in which side they are coming, like Harvard Medical School and a Wellman Laboratory. So uh, normally we call, uh, call it as MGH, Mass General Hospital, MGH group. Okay. And then uh, abstract. Abstract is a, a very highly, uh, say, distilled and technically it's not, yeah, okay, it's abstract, but uh, technically it's a kind of distillation. It's a highly distilled dis description of full paper, entire paper. So it's not an introduction, but uh, they uh, give a very compact form of anything important of this paper. It can, uh, it actually, it consists anything, including that the short introduction, principle, method, result, and a, a discussion and a conclusion, or maybe they two, these two can be connected, okay? Like in this case, uh, we demonstrate a high-speed sensitivity, high-resolution optical domain based optical uh, uh, frequency domain interferometry using rapid, uh, rapidly tuned wavelength sweeps or sweeps, uh, sweeping laser. It's actually the uh, conclusion, it's a result and a conclusion, right? They are going to demonstrate it and they prove, uh, okay, maybe this is a result. And, uh, sh and again, result show experimentally that the frequency domain ranging provides a superior signal to noise ratio compared with the conventional time domain ranging. This is again, the result and also the conclusion. It's a direct conclusion, direct logic and a high sensitivity of uh, 110 dB was obtained. And it's a result. And maybe this one, and again, this one is a conclusion, an order of magnitude improvement compared with previous OCD interferometric imaging method. Okay, so uh, in any way, uh, when you read it, uh, the abstract, can be carefully read. It's worth to spend a significant time to read the abstract. Actually, reading abstract is not that easy because it gives a, only a small sentence and a short sentence, but its density is really high. And you can find out a lot of unknown words here, but it's really worth to spend the time to carefully read the abstract. And by reading the abstract, actually you can understand 50% of the paper, okay? And then uh, after reading the abstract, what we are going to do, check the structure. So uh, I just explained the general structure of the paper, but uh, uh, it actually, uh, in, in reality, the real structure of the paper can vary by author by author, okay? So then uh, you can check the structure. Introduction. Okay, that's quite natural. And a principle. Okay, again, uh, actually, they, uh, their case, they use the word of principle. And OFDR, it seems uh, they explain the principle of OFDR, mechanism of OFDR. I see. And then uh, they are going to talk about the theory of signal and noise current. Mm -hmm. And then experiment. They will talk about that uh, it seems the first experimental system. Actually, uh, this is not the result, but the method section, right? And uh, also it's a method section, but also show uh, some of the result it seems. Mm -hmm. And then SNR and sensitivity. This is not a method, but uh, they did some investigation 
kind of give us the experimental result here. And images, it's an imaging result, show the finger pad, cross section of the finger pad skin. And conclusion. Okay, I see. And then acknowledgement uh, is uh, something like the description of the uh, something behind the research, like National Science Foundation is a sponsor, uh, uh, the grant sponsor and the Center for, Center for Integration of Medicine and Innovative Technology. Okay, so these two support the project. And also generous gift, Dr. and Mrs. J.S. Chen for optical diagnostic program. Hmm. Okay. So uh, by checking the acknowledgement, you can imagine what was happened behind the project. It is actually very important. It, it uh, significantly affected the direction of the research. So uh, from this, you can understand what the important, uh, what the uh, say importance of the research in the author's awareness and also the social awareness. So this is a social support actually description of the social, social support, okay? And then now you uh, grab that the practical structure of this particular paper. Then what the next, okay? So maybe uh, you can spend uh, 20, 20 minutes or something to do this. And then next, you can carefully read the introduction. Okay. After grabbing a structure, you can carefully read the introduction now here. And uh, what was the point to read the introduction? I think you remember it. Situation, complication, and approach. Okay, find the situation, background, and a complication, problem, and their approach, and then clarify the hypothesis. Okay, and then uh, two path. The one possibility, uh, if you want to do it, you can check the conclusion, jumping, uh, jump to the conclusion. Okay, so it further clarify you to understand their hypothesis, the problem and the answer. Okay, now checking the hypothesis, you can directly check the conclusion that the uh, uh, most important message from the author. But uh, in my case, I didn't directly jump to the conclusion. But at first, uh, okay, at first I'm going, oh, did I do something? No. So uh, when I when I'm reading the paper and uh, uh, after reading the introduction, uh, I carefully check the figures, with the facts. Most of the cases is the result, right? But here, figure and captions, basic configuration of OFDL, and I can spend a uh, significant time to uh, the graphical, say, representation of the principle. Okay, and the, uh, okay, light at the, sorry, the light source is here and the, uh, the beam coming from this, and it's a coupler, and a beam divided into two, and a reflected by a mirror on one hand, and the, uh, scattered back from the sample on the other hand, they are going to be combined and are detected by photodetector, I see. Okay. And then the next figure here, it their particular OFDI system. And uh, you can check it. And uh, it's a little bit, uh, say, complicated structure than uh, figure one. But uh, by carefully checking it, 
you can check the light path and uh, what they are doing and what they are measuring. Okay. And the result, see the result. And carefully read the caption and check the figure. And uh, the figures are mainly the important results. The figures are dedicated to explain the important result. By carefully check that the cap by only by carefully check the caption and a figure, you can grab the eighty percent of the result. Okay, do it, and also this one. The read carefully, read the caption, and uh, maybe actually uh, I, I'm also uh, colorizing the caption normally, and the figure. Okay, I see this one. And a sensitivity measurement, the same. Uh, and uh, finally, the image of human skin. And uh, they give uh, actually a detailed description in a caption. So by only reading the caption and uh, the carefully checking the figure, you can understand the 80% of the result. And then finally, the conclusion. Okay, and uh, once you did it, I believe you have already been understood the 70% or 80% of the paper. And you already uh, can have constructed the entire structure and the main message of the paper in your brain. Now, actually, it's quite easy to read the other part. So you, now you have the totality of the paper already. And then you can feel something you didn't understand or you miss, you've missed by uh, reading from the beginning through the end. Okay, now you can start uh, read from this sentence. Uh, I mean, uh, just after the introduction. Introduction, you've already read it, right? You've already read the introduction and now you can go to the next. Okay, and uh, simply carefully reading it till the end. Let's go, uh, let's jump. And conclusion again. So conclusion is a kind of short, maybe uh, you can read a conclusion twice. Okay, the first one uh, for the first time carefully, and the second time just to recapitulate it. Okay, uh, just uh, just to summarize your, in your brain, it's just a one minute process. And also, uh, when you read the paper, uh, uh, as you are reading the paper, you found the important references. Uh, you also can mark it in a reference reference list reference list. Like, uh, maybe uh, I want to read this paper, for example, and you can mark it and uh, you can download the paper later and can check it. So it's quite easy now. When I was a student, I need to go to the library and I make up and I get, get this kind of huge book and I make a photocopy of it. But now you can just a single click, you can download it. It's quite easy. And uh, most of the papers are now free. That's great. Okay, and um, that's the second half of today's lecture. And uh, if there, so at this moment, is there any question, comments? Okay. So then uh, today's homework. Maybe now you are ready to read through this paper. Yun 2003. Okay, uh, try reading it. Uh, maybe the time is a little bit too short to finalize it for some student uh, till the, the next section, uh, ne uh, next lecture. But in any way, uh, you can start to uh, start reading this paper. But uh, when you read it, uh, carefully aware the method I've talked today. Okay, when you read the introduction and uh, clarify the uh, 
situation, complication, approach, and hypothesis. And I try follow, I try following that uh, say reading flow, like uh, the introduction, conclusion, uh, introduction, and uh, figure captions, conclusion, and uh, going back, back to the method section, or just after the introduction. Okay. Okay, uh, that's it. Uh, I think yeah, that's it for that, this lecture. Okay, uh, if you have some uh, question, uh, simply uh, give me an email or simply you can ask me now uh, or give me a message later. Okay, thank you guys. That's it for today. Um, professor, I want yeah. to ask a question. Mm -hmm. uh, just, uh, as we are um, um, beginning to study an area, uh, I think it's real, uh, a little bit hard for us to um, just uh, read the figure after the introduction. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's really a bit hard for us to um, understand it um, without reading the explanation. So uh, I think it might um, be put uh, a little um, back forward at the beginning of our reading. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, yeah, if, if you uh, if you think uh, the result directly checking the figure is hard, uh, maybe uh, you can uh, read in a direct order of the paper, like an uh, introduction to the method and the result. Okay, and uh, maybe uh, once you did it, uh, it, when you did it uh, once or twice, or one paper or two papers in, uh, in that field, uh, maybe you can do, uh, you can directly go to the result section later. So, but in, in, anyway, for the uh, first time, you have some difficulty, uh, you can read from the beginning through the end, okay? Uh, or uh, you can find some review paper on, or easy textbook. So that is a kind of uh, the good entry point. And okay. also, yeah, the reading method is not only one. So you can modify mm -hmm. this, uh, or you can, and some other guys are doing a slightly different method. And uh, you, you can mimic it. Actually, and, uh, after a year or two, uh, the best situation is you can, if you can build your own method after a year or two, it might be the best, okay? I understand. Thank you, Professor. Hey, uh, any other question? Okay, uh, if it's not, uh, let's close this lecture. Thank you.